Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Easy Transfer here. So today I want to take you around my 77 Yamaha XS500. Seeing as that people have uh, been inquiring about it, um, even made some offers, and I uh, figured this would be beneficial. So some folks out there would know uh, what has really gone into this thing and uh, what I have planned for it. All right, so when I picked this thing up about a year and a half ago, it was completely stock with the exception of the handlebars. I uh, had a bunch of rust in the tank and the petcocks and the carbs. So there's now, after all the work I've done, there's no rust in the tank. Um, I'm down to one single fuel petcock and a single carb on a two into one manifold, and it's a modern carb. So um, that's all clean and great. Um, <clears throat> just yesterday, I installed a new starter relay or starter solenoid. Um, got a brand new battery, sealed battery at that. Uh, so that should all be good and fine. Um, up until the battery replacement and the starter solenoid, I've just been kickstarting it. But what's great is it fires right up on the first kick. So, and hopefully I'll be able to ca uh, capture some of that on camera today. Um, so I'm just going to run through the list as quickly as possible because if I take my time and explain all of it, it's going to be a very long video. So this bike was a single uh, brake front brake setup, and uh, I've upgraded to two calipers here. Uh, those are brand new calipers on either side, and the discs are uh, off an XJ Maxim, so they're thinner than the stock discs, and they're also slotted, um, less rotating mass. Uh, we've got steel braided lines on the whole thing, front and back. Um, I've got a, a 2016 Yamaha FZ07 clutch uh, perch and brake master cylinder and shorty adjustable levers along with some built wheel grips. I've got a fork brace here made by Dean Speed Customs and I made that fender out of fiberglass um, just a, a shorty little fender to complement the rest of the bike. I've also got uh, a new headlight bucket and a projector headlight with the halos and a new speedometer I ditched the key ignition and went to a switch. Uh, let's see what else here. Just single mirror. We've got clip-ons with a uh, 7 8 bar in here. Um, the entire paint job is just rattle can. It cost me like 20 bucks at uh, Home Depot. And I also uh, went to my vinyl guy and got the custom stickers, which is a carbon fiber sticker. So turned out pretty good. Like I said, single round slide. That's a VM36 on a, a two into one manifold, uh, blocked off the tachometer. Uh, let's see, uh, did a two into one exhaust, I wrapped it uh, ceramic, painted with a single Dean Speed Customs Havoc. Thing sounds ridiculous. Um, I did just do an oil change uh, yesterday as well, um, and I went with a 2050, hoping that that should quiet down the engine a little bit. I also put a modern uh, oil filter adapter and I have a modern oil filter on it so I'm thinking that's good for the long haul we've got some aluminum uh, knurled foot pegs uh, let's see what else here <clears throat> well I mean okay so these shocks are off of so I had a 2018 Triumph Bonneville Street Twin and I bought these upgraded shocks for it and then later on traded in the bike and uh, kept the shocks and so all we had to do was sleeve the studs on the top and the bottom so they would fit this and these are uh, preload adjustable and height adjustable as well uh, I've got the XJ I believe this is an XJ Seca rear rotor and uh, that's the caliper that was on the bike but uh, new pads new discs steel braided line I do have a Ninja 650 rear master cylinder that I'm going to uh, run in line with the frame here and put the remote reservoir up top and use the stock uh, brake linkage here and back there um, but it'll be nice to have the upgraded master cylinder while we're on the topic of suspension uh, I did find that I can get some tech um, a race tech uh, front springs for this progressive front springs for a, a pretty fair price in my opinion so I'm gonna end up flushing the fluid out and um, putting in the new springs and putting probably a little bit heavier weight fluid in it since the rear shocks are pretty stiff uh, I do know that this has new fork seals so I'm not worried about that and it hasn't shown any signs of leaking 
Um, so I think another huge uh, part of this build is the custom subframe tail section and seat. So I'll try to show you a little bit of the uh, subframe there. That, uh, that was all made, um, handmade to match the, the shape of the tail. And it's in multiple pieces, so you can actually take off the tail and leave the battery tray, or you can remove the battery tray as well. So this is an aluminum tail um, made to match the shape of the tank, and I'd say it does it perfectly. We've got some <clears throat> custom dynamics uh, LED lights in here, um, which eventually, now they work with the brake as it stands, but eventually I'll wire them up to blink uh, and be a blinker as well. I don't have any front blinkers yet, so whenever I figure that out, which I was thinking, since I'm going to mention it, about uh, finding a way to get either one of these sides to blink uh, to represent right or left indicator and uh, then wire up these as well. So here's a little look in so a jumble of wires but you can remove the um, tail lights separately so if you want to like take them off and unplug them here you can wash the bike without worrying about getting those things wet or for whatever reason. Uh, here's a little bit better look at the subframe straight through. Um, oh, another important thing, just since we're looking at it, if you get a good look at this profile, you'll notice that the uh, bottom of the tank, uh, the, the frame and subframe as well as the tail all run a concurrent straight line. Um, that was important to achieve, so we lifted the rear of the tank an inch, which you can see here is with these spacers. Um, also with the perch the way it is, the, the, the height of the rear shocks and the front suspension tried to make that line parallel with the ground so that was like I said a very important thing uh, now I want to show you the seat because this one I'm gonna take it in the shade so we can see it a little bit better but um, I made this seat pan out of fiberglass um, again it was my first time really working with fiberglass and uh, I have a video on my channel that encompasses that as well but uh, then it was upholstered by uh, Rex Simon Simon Designs and uh, this little post here that's threaded, let me show you what the intent is with that. So when this goes on, it actually fits on the front. Um, and when you set it down on the rear here, the front doesn't want to lift. So all we have to do is affix the rear. So what we're going to do is using that threaded post, um, there's going to be a, a bracket that comes to the tray here and it'll be shaped so that as you tighten the nut on this, it pulls the seat toward the tail and seals it up. And you'll notice that's why there's a lip here on the seat edge. So that way it encloses the tail and uh, no one's the wiser. So I think I've covered everything. Uh, if I missed anything, I'll put it in the comments. But what's next? Um, Probably the front suspension. I'll probably pull the wheels and get those powder coated black. I'll leave the lip of the wheels that raw look. Um, I do want to take everything that's here and minimize it. I'm going to go through the entire wiring harness and reduce as much as I can. And then I'm going to put everything in the tail. So the starter relay. Um, I'm going to go with anti-gravity on the battery and take those fuses. I'm going to run everything to the back. Um, I'll probably ditch this uh, old school brake light switch and run with a, a pressure switch on the uh, banjo bolt. But ultimately what you can expect is from the profile that all you'll have is in its entirety below the, the tank and frame line will literally just be the motor, the carburetor, and a big air filter, probably like a uni uh, air filter. Heck, I might even do a red one just so it stands out. Um, we may change the exhaust a little bit. I may put a reverse cone on it just to have a little more classic look and bring it up closer to that uh, that passenger foot peg kind of area just to run it a little bit tighter. Um, other than that, I've got a shock-mounted license plate bracket here on the bottom. We may run something um, off the swing arm that holds the plate here and also kind of acts as like a um, like a mud guard, if you will, to keep things from flying up, hitting the tail and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, the plans always change, right? As you get into a build and you work on it more and more and more, the, the plans grow and change. So 
this will thing this thing will be constantly evolving um, but I'll keep you guys posted on it if you have any questions about it um, just put it in the comments and uh, I'll answer right quick um, but if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, I'm always working on something. In fact, Cruz is on his way over right now with his Roadster to get handlebars, the tank lift, the coil relocation done. And I'm going to probably have a video on that too. So subscribe so you guys can keep up with this stuff and hopefully benefit from those videos. And then most importantly, guys, especially right now with everything going on, please stay safe.